Today on Photo Kitchen, we're talking about two features found in Adobe Lightroom Classic that need to be part of your workflow right now. Hello and welcome to episode number 13 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and today we find ourselves back inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. We are going to discuss two underappreciated, almost unknown features of this program that is going to help you call or edit down images from a lot to a few to find that maybe perfect image to submit to your portfolio or social media or give you a better set of images to submit to clients. These two features are found underneath view on the menu bar called compare and survey. And they're gonna help you find the best image or images from a particular shoot and save you a lot of time in doing that. As you can see, I've already imported a set of images inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. This was a fly fishing shoot done at Pyramid Lake. And yes, they actually utilize ladders in this particular activity. Now, this was that type of shoot that's kind of like event work or wedding work or even sports photography where you're capturing individuals doing an action and there's a lot of repetition, there's a lot of images captured in hopes to capture that decisive moment. Now, because of that and hundreds if not thousands of images that are shot on a regular basis, it could be a real chore inside of any editing program to find the best images or even the ideal portfolio image in these programs. So before I could even hop in either one of these modes, I have to have multiple images selected. So I'm going to select eh, the first eight images here. I'll actually reduce the size of my thumbnails a little bit, but I'm going to select about eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to view and I'm going to go from grid view into something called survey mode. Now survey mode has a keyboard shortcut of the letter N, which I remember by knowing that I'm never going to remember that it's survey. It's the only way that I've made it stick, but I'm going to click on survey. And what happens is it takes my eight images and kind of isolates them. So now I'm only looking at eight thumbnails. And by the way, here's a good keyboard shortcut to know, and it's the same on Windows and it is on Mac. If you need to maximize the work area, this gray area in between the columns and above the film strip, if you need to maximize this space, hold down shift and then hit your tab key on the keyboard and that's shift tab on Windows, shift tab on Mac, and it will collapse down the interface. So the left and right column goes away, the film strip goes away, and you're left by just looking at whatever you're editing. And it doesn't matter what mode that you're in, this is a great way to work with it. And in this case, in survey, it gives my thumbnails a little bit more space to work. Now, what's great about survey is this is very much like the old days of having slides or negatives on a light box or a light table and just being able to see them all at once and start to filter through them. Survey is really designed to take you from a lot of images to a few images. That's its real function or probably at least the best way to utilize it. Because what happens here is when you put your cursor over any one of these thumbnails, you're gonna get a small X in the bottom right hand corner. Now what you're doing here is you're eliminating the stuff that you don't like. So for example, in this case, I'm not wild about the position of the fishing pole. So I'm gonna click the X here and collapse it down. When I do this, it shuffles the images and resizes them so they get a little bit bigger and I could see more detail in each image. So really what you're doing here is you're trying to immediately weed away the bad stuff, the stuff that you know you could just look at, you could have looked at in the thumbnail view and know that's a terrible image or at least that's not something I wanna move on or hold on to. So for example, here I see some images that have similar fishing pole positions. So I'm gonna to start to eliminate maybe a few of those. And then again, it shuffles the images and increases their size. So I have more work area here. So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna come in and maybe click the X here, get rid of that. It's pretty similar to that. And I don't like this one compared to that. So now we're shuffling again, we're getting an increase in size. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy with what I'm looking at. Now I have a couple of images that are different two are the same. So maybe I'll just get rid of this one. And that's a pretty good start. So I went from eight images down to three images. And for those of you that are delivering images to a client for maybe their opinion or to get their selections, this is a great resource because you're not trying to go to that perfect image. You still have to submit them to a client. This is going to save you a lot of time and make this process a lot easier. Now to get back into grid view or back into the normal library module, I'm just gonna to go to grid here or you can hit the letter G on the keyboard 
And when I do this, I could see that my thumbnails are still selected. And from here, you just need to tag the images. And what tagging system that you use? Do you use flags? Do you use color labels? Do you use stars? Kind of a personal preference. In my particular case, I like using star ratings because they're easy to remember because of keyboard shortcuts. So I don't know. For the moment, I'm just going to rate these as three stars. All right. And now I can then sort by three stars and see all my three star images and submit these off to my client who could then tell me which particular casting shot that they like. And of course, if you want to see your columns and your film strip again, hold down the shift key, hit the tab key on the keyboard, and you will be back into kind of a normal working mode of the library module. Now, another way to call or edit down your images is a mode called compare. And this mode is a little bit more revolved around finding the absolute best image. So instead of survey giving you a lot of images to a little images, compare is really trying to give you the best image uh, that you could possibly find. Now, I'm going to scroll down here and find a few more images that are similar. Select this series here. And just like with survey, it's always gonna begin with selecting multiple images. I'm gonna come up to view on the menu bar, and then I'm gonna come down and select compare, which it's keyboard shortcuts, really easy to remember, it's just the letter C. So I'll go ahead and click on that. So before I get deep into this interface, I'm gonna hold down shift, hit the tab key, so now I can maximize my working area of this compare view. Now the process or the power of this compare view is pretty straightforward. It doesn't matter if you have 20, 50, 100, 1,000 images selected. It's only gonna show you two images at a time. It always takes the first image and makes it the select, or for lack of a better word, really, the champion, right? The image on the right-hand side is the candidate or the challenger. The mechanics of this mode are pretty straightforward. Whatever image you don't like of the two, you go to the bottom right hand corner of that image and click the X. So in this particular case, I like the candidate more than I like the select. I like the body position of the fisherman in the background with the pole, I like the arc there. So I'm gonna click the X for select. What that does is it takes the candidate, it moves it over to the select and we have a new champion. And also by process, we also now have a new candidate. And then you look at the candidate and go, well, do I like this better than what's currently loaded for select? And in my particular case, I don't. I'm gonna click the X for that. It loads a new candidate. I'm still liking the select more than the candidate, so I'll click the X for candidate again. Same thing here. Same again, I think the candidate's pretty good. That looks good as uh, the select still running, rings around these other images. And then it goes to the last image in the series. And for some reason, it goes to this last image that wasn't part of my selection. And I don't know if this is a glitch inside of my version of Lightroom Classic or a new thing to let them know that you're done. Because this is problem number one with this. When you reach the end of it, when you reach your last candidate and you click on the X, it doesn't give you a, you have reached the end of it. It doesn't give you a Street Fighter KO winner kind of thing. It just sits there. Sometimes it will blink at you if you hit the X for the candidate enough like it's doing now, but in no way does it tell you that you're actually done. In my particular case, it did load an image after the current selection, so maybe that's Adobe's new way of letting me know that I've reached the end, but either way, they could definitely work on this interface. There is a done button down in the bottom right-hand corner of the entire interface that you could click to get out of this, but you could also go up to view and come down and go to grid. So I'm gonna hit done and we're gonna run into the second part. I'll hit actually letter G and come back into here so we see the grid view. Even though that when I hit done, it took me into loop view, when I come back into grid view, and again, I was using keyboard shortcuts there, but you could always come up to view and select grid. If you look closely in grid view, it actually has two, not one, two images selected. You were trying to find the single best image and you got two images selected. What you have to know is when you come back into grid view, that the image that was the select, the champion, the one that you wanted to see, you know, get into your portfolio or end up on social media, that is the active image compared to the other image. And this goes into the light gray on medium gray motif of Lightroom and it's, ugh, it's terrible, but nevertheless, that is the actual select. So what I'm gonna do is hold down Command on Mac, Control on Windows, click on that other image. So now I have just one image selected here and I will flag it. That is the grand champion, and that was the best image out of the particular series. So if you're not using survey or compare mode inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic, I strongly urge you to start using it as part of your editing calling process. 
It's going to get you from hundreds or thousands of images down to those handful of images. It's going to do it in a very quick time. It's going to do it with a new level of accuracy. And you're going to be grateful once you start to utilize these two very unknown or underappreciated features inside of this program. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your fellow photography friends. And until next time, this is MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.